William Eklund has arrived. People, this is what we've been waiting for. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Uh, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day, even when our Swedish son scores his first hat trick. And we have to do a live Saturday night episode uh, to discuss that. So... If you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. And today, William Ecklin, he's here. We we have been waiting. This is the moment we have been waiting for uh, as Sharks fans, right? You've seen the glimpses. You've seen it. This is this is that moment, that moment where William Ecklin, um, yeah, he's good, kids. Uh, he's really Good. So we are going to be discussing this game, talk about William Eklund, kind of what this means for his future, um, all this stuff, digging numbers, and then I'll answer some of your questions. So if you guys have questions, make sure you drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll also probably talk about uh, where the shark are at the tank, um, the penguins pick, all that fun stuff. So yeah, William Eklund, hat trick as uh, he scores all three goals for the Sharks in a three to two victory over the St. Louis Blues. Uh, the Sharks sweeping, sweeping the St. Louis Blues again. The Sharks uh, this year, they've won 18 games, uh, three of which are against the Blues. Um, not a math guy, but I think that's one out of six, whatever. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, so 16% of their games wins have come from the Blues this year. Um, almost 17%. Man, it's never going to make up for the Blues uh, headshotting their way to the Stanley Cup Finals, but it is nice to kind of play that spoiler role. And then to make things even better today is that you can't even feel bad about the win because the Blackhawks won too. So still, Sharks hit seven points between themselves and the Blackhawks with six games left. Um Basically, the Sharks would have to have over a point per game in the final six games. So we're we're combing it, we're closing in on that. But William Ecklin, and you saw it tonight. You saw an absolute, you saw the one timer that you've seen him work on and develop since he's come to North America, right? You saw that kind of start, especially last year in the AHL, kind of honing in on that, honing in on that. And then you continue to see it, and then Right, that has become an absolute weapon on the power play. Um, and great, great job on the power play. You know, that was basically that was how the Sharks were able to manufacture offense, and that's fine, right? Especially for this team right now, which struggles to manufacture offense. We've talked, we'll talk about more about their five one five later, but I don't care where you get the goals from right now. When you get to the NHL, I don't really care where you get the goals from right now. And the five on five stuff will come for Eklund when the five on five team is a much better team. So right now we're trying to take whatever point production we can. Um, but that you, that one timer that you've seen, you've seen all season, absolute snipe there. Second goal, crashing the net, right? Getting that kind of, ugly goal that we have you know you're you just continue to see him all the stuff that he's worked on right you need to be stronger on the net you need to kind of that strength you need to win board battles all that fun stuff you need to kind of um and we saw even the other game where he had like three golden opportunities to 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 cash in and just missed tonight he got the bounces right um does a great job of kind of waiting on that second goal, right? Kind of waiting, 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 see the place happening, goes behind the net, and it's just kind of Johnny on the spot there. And it could have, and 
Awesome job by Bortolo to kind of the falling away, the fader shot right there, falling away, get it to the net, let more stuff happen um, there. And then Eklund kind of finishes it off. And then the overtime goal. Mm-hmm. Behind his own net, coast to coast on a piece of toast, just outskates everybody. And there was no, you knew, you knew as soon as that thing went off as sick, that was going in. You no hesitation, no looking to pass, right? We know Ekla, we know how great a, a playmaker he is. Um, no, he knew, he knew it was his game, it was he knew it was his moment, and he took it right and then just gets mobbed by his teammates. But that confidence that we have seen from him continue to grow and develop and stepping into this role. Um, we know this is this is going to still be a long rebuild, right? Um, and I know people people look like there's going to be plenty of people who are going to be like, no, Eklund's not great, whatever, whatever, all that fun stuff. But he, this is right foundational piece right here. You're, you're you. It's going to get better, right? It's, well, you're you're going to have a top three pick in this draft. Um, I'm pretty confident in saying that you're going to get like Will Smith's going to be coming, like Quentin Musk is going to be coming, William Eckler, et cetera, et cetera. Um, man, I don't know how you can't be excited about the future as a Sharks fan. Um, has this season been painful? Yes. It's been a horrible season with a lot of terrible losses, but that dumb William Eckland face with that hat on it, that damn smile of his, um that's going to be that's going to be one of those things that we hold on to as like yeah i lived through it but you see the glimpses of what's going to be coming uh for for the sharks and and all that fun so um just great just great to enjoy this um because yeah we've earned it we have we've been waiting for this moment especially this season right and i know again point production it's tough, right? And Eklund's on his way to being a, you know, basically a half a point per, you know, production player this season. I know a good chunk of it's on the power play, et cetera, et cetera. But again, look at the way this team scores, right? Most of their scoring is on the power play because they're a bad, bad team. Like one of the worst teams that we've seen in, in a long time. Um, so whatever points you can get right now, you're going to get. Um, and as, Again, as the team gets better, you're going to see Ekwin have more 5v5 scoring. Like you're going to see, like, but you can see, you can see what he does when he gets more talent around him. It's it's going to be it's gonna be good, guys. Um also shout out Devin Cooley. Um getting that first NHL win. Just love to see it. Um, you know, you could tell just how happy all the guys were for him, how happy he was for him, all that fun stuff. Um, even like the post game interview where he's, he looks like a kid, you know, just like a kid on Christmas there. And he's got the, the picture of him with his, you know, what first win. Um, yeah, it was, it's just good to see, you know, the enjoy these little things, right? Cause that's what makes this season. So uh, like these little treats that make this season kind of worth it. Um, yes. Yeah, so hopefully the, the end prize of what we hope to get here, um, you know, in probably about a month's time, but enjoy these little things because these are what make, make this game great. Make a random Saturday afternoon game on a lost season, something memorable. Devin Cooley, who's worked his entire life for this moment. Um, yeah, just congratulations to him again. I w- would be very happy if the Sharks brought him back next year as the third goalie kind of your AHL NHL goalie. Um, you know, you're your kind of top AHL goalie. If you need him to play NHL games, he has looked, he looks like he belongs in the NHL. Like he looks, he looks like he belongs here. And especially with the injury history that we have seen from Blackwood and Vita Vanacek, having a strong third goalie, I'm fine with with Devin Cooley. And you're right. And again, he wants to be here. So um yeah. That was a fun game. That was a really fun game. So uh, we'll dig into the numbers of this game um, and then get to some of your questions. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, I'll try to answer all of them as best I can um, as we do kind of another you know, live edition Saturday night. 
because yeah whatever there's nothing better to go on right now right so um but yeah we'll get to dig into the numbers of the game here in just one second Did you know that even with a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you can contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most out of your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right. Uh, the numbers of this game are wonky because we had so much power play uh, time. I think we have to be kind of also before we get into the numbers. Uh, talk about the Kale and Addison which seemed to kind of spark the sharks, uh, right? Especially in the first period, the sharks were kind of dead in the water. Um, you know, in, in we had 15, 29 of five V five time at, at, in the first period, sharks had seven shot attempts during that time and gave up 21, but Kellen Addison, he questionable call. I thought it was a cross check, but cross check. That's worth some like conduct. Uh, kicks out of the game for abuse of officials. Whatever was said or not said or whatever apparently rubbed some the official the wrong way. Um, yeah, we who knows? But for some reason that that moment kind of sparked the sharks and coming out of the second period and having to kill off the you know that four minute power play. Um, you saw the Sharks kind of find their energy from there. Um, and I'm not sure what it was, whatever. I don't know what he said. I assume he said something um, that I can't repeat on this podcast, but um, got kicked out of the game. But the Sharks from there really found their game and kind of made something of it. So, um, but yeah, this game had a lot, a lot of special teams. Uh, with the Sharks getting five power play opportunities, they went two for five, and the um, Blues getting going one for six on their penalty kill, uh, or on their power play, excuse me. But, so let's look at the five five numbers, which are not super impressive um, in this game. So we had less than 42 minutes of 5v5 time. Um, the Blues outshot the Sharks 20 to 20, 38, excuse me, to 23. Actual shots was 20 to 14. Scoring chances was 20 to 6. All in favor of the Blues. 6 to 2 high danger chances. 1.61 to 0.78 expected goals for. All in favor of the Blues. But it was the Sharks power play, which really kind of was, was they were just better. Um, again, Sharks had more, you know, one more power play opportunity, but it was pretty close, you know. Um, 16 to uh sorry uh corsi four at five v so the sharks um sharks had 13 shot attempts uh the blues had 16 um actual scoring chances though is 10 to 7 in favor of the sharks six to three high danger chances 1.68 to one expected goals four in favor of the sharks and their five v five so they're the sharks power play was way more efficient and way better tonight in even i the last two looked a little choppy to me in the third period uh, when they were kind of hanging on there. Uh, but I think the special teams was, was definitely kind of the story of the game for, for this game. So um, as for the lines, they're going to be re a little funky here in this game. Um, so Zettelin Grandland caution played eight Oh four, seven to 12 shot attempt, six to six actual shots, 0. 0.4 to 0. 0.73 expected goals. Uh, four uh, in favor of the Blues, three to seven scoring chances, and one to three high danger chances. Eklund, Cunning, and Graf played seven ten, 
one shot attempt, uh, gave up four, one to two uh, actual shots, 0.02 to 0.08 expected goals for zero to one scoring chances. So um, as for Graf, I thought he played pretty well. Again, a really kind of choppy game with the amount of special teams and you kind of knew he wasn't going to be playing special teams, um, but you can kind of see a little bit of playmaking, right? I thought he made some solid decisions. Um, all that good stuff. I, I'm curious. I want to see a normal-ish game when you don't have a thousand power plays in it um, and kind of get some flow with, with that. And even too with having who couldn't even get into a fight. So he lost, you know, he was off the ice for a while. Like I want to kind of get into a, a normal game and kind of see, see what Graf does there. So, um, but I think didn't do anything to embarrass himself other than try this first time stepping on the ice. Um, but overall I thought, you know, you can, you can see what makes him intriguing. Borlo Studnika Zadina played 455, two to four shot attempts, uh, one to three actual shots, 0.16 to 0.13 expected goals. Four uh, one to one scoring chances and one to one high danger chances for that line, and then um, and then McDonald played, so the numbers are a little bit funky with him. Um, but again, overall, I think you have to take what you can out of the 5v5 here, especially because there was just so many power play opportunities um, in this game, and whatever for whatever reason, the refs decided to call a thousand penalties. Um, that's cool, um, I think that kind of favored the Sharks because of the way their power play has been playing lately. Um, and especially because I think 5v5, the blue, we've seen recently the Blues 5v, even the last game, right? Um, but these two teams played. The 5v5 favored the Blues so much because they just, they're just they able to kind of control and shoot and get more shots on if it wasn't for Blackwood kind of doing crazy Blackwood things. That game probably would have ended differently. Um, so any... I think the choppiness of this game favor the Sharks because they can kind of take advantage of where they're good. And this team is a, is I think is a good average ish to goodish uh, power play unit. And I, that's why I think they got, and even their penalty kill, which I know has been bad this year show has shown a lot better signs of life recently, as I think guys have gotten acclimated to this role. And I kind of expect the power, the penalty kill to be much better next year, especially if depending on who's back, but, with these young guys getting acclimated, I think the penalty kills can be much better uh, next year. So as for Cooley, uh, 34 saves on 36 shots, two goals against expected goals against was 3.31, 944 save percentage, 1.88 uh, GAA, um, four high danger saves on five high danger shots, 10 for 11 on the mid danger and 17 of 17 to low danger. So the Sharks down a defenseman, did a good job of kind of making his life easier tonight, not giving up a, a bunch of these high danger chances. And that's at all, every strength right there. So um, hats off to, you know, Henry Thrun, who played 25 minutes tonight um, in all situations. Ferraro played 26. Um, Mikhail Granlin played 25, 33 tonight, um, you know, as, as the four, like kind of Mikhail Granlin has been really solid for the Sharks this year, but Hats off to the defenseman who I think really, especially after the Addison, you know, thing really kind of stepped up and, and tried to make things easy as easy as they could. We'll see though tomorrow's game, right? So you have a second, second night of a back to back. Um, how do these guys respond? Especially guys, you know, like Ferraro, like Granlin, you know, um, even like Ruda who played 22 minutes tonight. Like how do these guys respond in a very, Tough game, went to overtime. How do they respond in the second game of a back-to-back? -back? So um, overall, though, you got a fun game, super fun game um, to enjoy. And again, William Eklund doing William Eklund. Um, yeah, that's fun. All right, let's get to some of your questions. We'll talk about some of whatever else you guys want to talk about here uh, in just one minute. Passionate drive and patience, the formula for winning championships, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guarantee Fit, you're burning rubber, not cash. 
With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, uh, let's answer some of your questions. Halfball Hockey says, our Swedish savior. Yeah. Feels good, doesn't it? It feels good. Uh, Sali uh, says, best game I've been to. Um, that was good. Yes, super fun uh, game. So he also mentions that the Cooley chants, I really like the Cooley chants. You could hear them um, through the TV. Uh, really like the Cooley. I like goalie chants for your guy. Actually, I just kind of like goalie chants in general, whether you're um, kind of razzing the other goalie or you're, you're, I don't know why goalie chants just kind of, it's great to see. Um, yeah, good there. So Robert asked, uh, any word on, I'm assuming he said Celebrini and Smith, that they tend to make the jump next year or stay in college. I assume Celebrini is going straight to the NHL because I think he is good enough to play in the NHL. Um, I think that Smith, uh, Smith is the big question and we'll spend, Plenty of time to discuss that um, because, yeah, it's going to be a fun offseason topic to discuss with Smith. I still think Smith – I think Smith is is ready to go to play professional hockey, and I kind of made my case, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But something we'll continue to dive in through this. But celebrating, I think his two-way game is strong enough that I don't think he needs to spend any more time in college. And I think he needs to kind of make that next step. And I think he is physically, again, I know he's 17. Um, he'll be 18 here in June. But the way he's built, he's six foot 190. Um, and I think he plays a physical enough game. And I think that he can kind of, he'll need to have a really nice summer. But I'm I'm more, I I think he's he's going to be ready to go. Um, celebrating Eklund, the new Taze Kane. Joke side, it was great to see the tank rockets tonight. Uh, you need these games in a rebuild. Um, I hope that the new Taze Kane, except for the off field stuff, um, you can Google that, but that would be great. Um, like having, having those type of players, um, are fun to have on your team. Um, and that's this is what the Sharks need, right? They need as great as the prospect pool is, you know, kind of looking. You need these blue chip guys to pan out, right? It's great to have prospects, but if they don't pan out into something. Yeah, that's then you're just kind of wasting time. But I think this was this season as tough as it was for Eklund. Um, you see these flashes and you see these moments. And when there's more talent around where he's not having to kind of do not do everything, but when there's more talent around him, um, that's going to make his life easier. Um, you're going to continue to see more and more games like this, hopefully from him. Um, so let's see. Uh Mr. F considerations. Uh, Greer pro scouting doing some really good things, excluding uh, mainly Limblom. Greer is taking good shots on somewhat last chance guys. Yeah. And again, you're not going to go one, you know, there's no way you're going to bet a, a you know, a thousand percent on this, right? Um, you know, look at all the guys that brought in Limblom, didn't work out, but you saw the pedigree and you saw a guy who was well on his way to being a, you know, I think a really good kind of middle six second line type of player before he got sick. And that's going to be, I think his career is that is very much a, what if he doesn't get sick type of, of question. And, you know, it's a conversation for a different day, but you know, Zadina, who's a very much a by low can, I think Zadina is well on his way to, you know, 15 goals this year. Um, that that's a great signing, right. Um, taking chances on some of these guys here. And again, it's come in where you're, Plenty of opportunities. What can you do with it? And I think that has been his kind of sales pitch. And again, you're not going to bet a thousand, but if you can hit on some of these guys and turn some of these guys into capable pieces, um, that would be that would be really good for for the Sharks going forward. And you know, even a guy like Devin Cooley, who was you know the Sharks traded his seventh. So Mackenzie Blackwood, the Sharks traded a sixth round pick for, and then Devin Cooley, who the Sharks paid a seventh round pick, and who knows what Cooley, you know, maybe this is his moment and you know, whatever, but like you can still see that there's like the athleticism is off the chart with him, his ability to get like 
that's what makes Blackwood so good, right? Is Blackwood's ability to kind of get across the crease. You see that with Cooley, his ability to kind of to that side to side lateral movement with, with him and his flexibility. Um, there was a, a kind of like a two on one early in the game where the Blues they kind of missed it right now. If it was really good pass, um, whoever I forget who was receiving the pass just kind of kind of shanked it a little bit. It looked like it was gonna be a goal, but I like watching the replay. Like, Cooley made it over. If that if that shot was on target, I think Cooley makes the save in that in that type of game. Uh, just because again, like that lateral agility, it could take you really far. We'll see how long. Like a guy like uh, Quick, who kind of relied on it, and then had to kind of learn. You know, once he got a little bit older and couldn't kind of make the same movements you saw that dip and i think now quick has kind of refound his game as he's you know using that old man ymca strength um to to, to kind of refigure things out but you know i think cooley is in a position like i said i would love for him to be to re-sign with the sharks and be that new version of aaron dell who can kind of I'll be, i can happily play in the with the barracuda i can kind of you know i've been through a lot right a guy like Cooley who's played on a bajillion AHL teams. He's he's had to come up through the ranks. I can help out some of these young guys. If you need me to, to play, somebody goes down. If you need me to come up for a week or two and play a couple games here and there, I can totally do that. Um, so, yes. Uh, Sully asked, do you think Z. William would be a useful asset for this team, especially with his relationship with Will Smith? I remember your video on him, but with your draft closer, do you have your thoughts changed? No, Z. William um, is definitely a target with uh, the Penguins pick. I love Z. William. I think he he would be. Um, I know he's maybe not in the same tier as some of the other guy, like kind of top end guys, and I think it's because he's six foot or six foot one. Um, but I love, again, I'm wearing my defenses for nerd shirts. And I, th I think he does actually have a really good combination of his ability to play defense, but also provide offense. Um, yeah, I, I really think Z William would be a, a great target for the Sharks there um, with whatever that Penguins pick is. That Penguins pick is creeping into the playoff spot right now. I think they were in the playoffs um, this afternoon and then the Isles won, so that bumped them out of the playoffs. But we need the Penguins who uh, they. We need the Penguins to lose a couple games here. They do have some really tough games. They're playing um, Monday. They play Toronto. They play Detroit, who's kind of fighting for their playoff life. I think, or I don't know if they got kicked out of the playoffs, but they're right there in the mix. That's a huge game for both teams. Um, they're playing Boston. Boston's trying to you know kind of clinch their stuff. Like we need the we need the Penguins to lose a couple games here. So uh, just to kind of get that pick get that pick down there so um yeah robert asked we'll end here quinn loves uh kind of in but is he worth the three million qualifying offer um no he's not worth the three million dollars but is he probably gonna get it probably uh because one the sharks have to spend some money this off season to get to the salary cap floor um and Two, like, you know, whatever. I could also see maybe they give him like a, a instead of you know maybe like a two or three year deal type of thing. Um, but whatever. Again, the sharks have the sharks have a lot of money that they're they're going to have to um, spend this year, and especially if they move on from plastic or if they, uh, you know, if Logan Gator is an LTIR candidate like player they're going to have plenty of money to spend um, and they have still a ton of holes to fill um, going to this off season. Remember uh, right now, as there's two forwards who are on the active roster who are signed through the 25, 26 season, um, their names are William Eklund and Colin Graff. Like, yes, they have a bunch of RFAs um, that they can resign, um, but they have two forwards who are like literally on the roster. So yeah, I think he gets his money. We'll spend some time talking about uh, kind of when the season gets over. But yeah, I think maybe they they let it go. Like, might be one of those things where they kind of push it to arbitration, uh, and then he signs like a deal that's probably somewhere in between. The, you know, so what if it's I don't know the exact qualifying offer, but what if he gets like a 
you know, two years at like 2.8 or something like that, where it's kind of meets in the middle. We've seen Greer kind of play hardball and kind of be with some of those guys. Um, but yeah, uh, last question I get out here. What are the odds that we see Musty and Smith play for the Sharks next year? I think pretty good, to be honest. Now, do they play for the whole season? No, but I think we could, there's a potential to see them both in a game. I think Quentin Musty gets his nine games next year. Um, and then basically is like, if you're good to go, we will keep you up here. Um, if not, you'll head back into uh, the OHL to play with Sudbury. But, and again, I've been, I think Smith signs um, and whether he starts in the AHL or whatever, well, that's a conversation, you know, plenty of time to discuss that. But I think there's a better than zero chance that we get uh, Smith and Musty playing for playing games together um, on, on the Sharks next year. So um, that's going to do it for me tonight. We'll be back tomorrow to discuss the Coyotes game. We'll keep track of um, all the prospects, all that good stuff. So make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube. Thank you for everyone hanging out on this live Saturday night edition of Locked on Sharks. Um, appreciate all you guys. Appreciate everybody who's donated um, for me to go to vegas um so yeah tickets booked hotel booked um thank you guys for for helping to pay for that if you still want to you can check out my social media if you want to um find a way to help out uh, any anything helps it, it really does help so it means a lot uh that you guys support me so much but um but anyway that's gonna be it for me tonight follow the show wherever you get podcasts watch on youtube um you can follow on twitter facebook and instagram at locked on sharks Follow me on Twitter at my fry hole till tomorrow. Bye friends.